Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how we pour, stamp, and then clean the stamp concrete and get it ready for, for sealer. Um, all in this video. So this is the morning of the pour. We, we got it all ready to go beforehand. And so we show up in the morning with the wire mesh, putting the wire mesh down. And we got what we, we call some slab bolsters under the wire mesh just to help hold it up off the ground. That way we don't have to pull it up into the concrete when we're pouring. So the concrete's on its way right now. It's going to be back in, in around behind this garage here very shortly. This is about a 450 square foot stamp concrete walkway and a patio. So there'll be some steps built on that back door coming down onto the patio. Now we're using 4000 PSI concrete and when I stamp I like to use a smaller aggregate so it's got a, a 3 8 stone in it. I call it a pea stone mix. So it's a very small stone. It just makes stamping a, lot, a little bit easier as far as pressing the stamps down into the surface of the concrete. And it, we also put color in the concrete. We actually added gray to the concrete. Now when concrete cures out, it kind of really lightens up a lot. And regular concrete will look almost, almost whitish. As you can, if you look at the concrete foundation there, in the background underneath that plastic it's a really light gray almost white and the same will happen to the patio if you don't add color to it so we we put like a dark gray color in it and it's gonna stay about the same color it looks like it is right now which is just what the homeowner wanted now the first step really to pouring stamp concrete is getting it getting the slab poured or placed however you want to call it it's really the technical term is placed, but we, we use poured a lot. Now we got to get it screeded right off the top of the forms. It all slopes away from the house a little bit, so the water will run off it. But it's important to really get it placed correctly. You know, f you want it nice, f nice and flat with whatever slope you're going to have on it. So when you go to stamp it, it's a lot easier to stamp, and then it sheds water. And the way we usually usually place it is we'll we'll dump out you know a pretty good sized section one guy will be mag floating the edges nice and smooth like Darren did and then we'll just screed it along the top of the forms if we set the forms to grade that's what makes it easiest so Darren's gonna go ahead and screed that while the rest of us dump out a little more of the concrete get it spread out put it in place and we like to, you know, this was about eight yards. We like to get something like this all placed, bull floated, in about 30 minutes. You know, you, a lot of guys will do it faster. Some of you will be slower based on your experience. But, you know, if you can get it down in a relatively relatively quick amount of time, then the, you don't have to worry so much about the outside temperatures setting up the concrete too fast. Now today is kind of cloudy and it's not super hot out. As you can tell, we got sweatshirts on, so we're not real worried about it setting it up too fast. Because that's really the key when it comes to stamping, you know, knowing when to start and then how fast you got to stamp, how fast you got to work to get from one end to the other. And I teach you all that. You know, if you want to learn more about that, I teach you about that in my private training, the Concrete Underground, which is in the description down below the video also and I also have a stamp court concrete course down there where I I have a lot of in-depth trainings about the basics on learning how to stamp concrete so that's also down in the description of the video if you click on the show more tab below the video on a desktop or the little down arrow on your phone you'll you'll open up all the description and the notes in the video so those links are down there if you want to learn more about stamping. Those are the places to check out. And I'm going to, you know, go over the basics just like what we're doing here on this. This is, you know, to me this is a basic stamp concrete patio or a walkway. Getting getting the concrete there, knowing how to get it screeded and leveled, bow floating it correctly. And then when are you going to start? You know, do you start right after you bow float? Do you have to wait a half hour? Do you have to wait an hour? That's really the key, is learning how to do that. So we're just finishing up. We'll get the rest of that screeded, and then I'm going to show you 
you know, I like to bull float it really, really good. I think it's important as far as the finishing process goes is just how nice you bow float it will make the finishing process a lot easier we use i use a bow float that has rounded edges too i like the rounded edges on the bow float as you'll see here in a second because they don't really leave lines in the concrete when you bow float it you know and the less you have to work around as you can see right here i'm going to push that out nice and easy with the front edge tipped up then i'm going to spin the handle and the back edge is going to tip up and I'm going to go over that once, twice, maybe three times, whatever it takes to fill in all the aggregate holes left by the screeding and bring up a nice smooth paste on the surface so it's nice and smooth. But having that bull float with the rounded edges doesn't dig in as one as much as one does with square edges and there's hardly any lines there. So as Luke and Darren finish up screeding, you can see I've gone on to bull floating. And the bull floating part is really pretty fast, especially on something four or 500 square feet like this. So it doesn't take very long. And then what we'll do before we stamp is we'll just make sure we're smoothing out all the edges, getting them ready to go. Now it's not ready to stamp yet. It's still way too soft. So we gotta let it sit for a little bit. If the sun was on it, you know, that the timing would be a lot quicker as far as starting. So here we are. This is a certain amount of time after. And that, that time I go over in detail, you know, in my private training. So you can check that out. But this is part of the process we use before we stamp is we'll get on it and mag float out the surface. So we'll do what we can reach by hand. And then you can see Darren in the background using what we call a a funny float he'll hook that little mag float to some handles and he can reach out there in the middle a little bit further and then the other guy will just go around the edges and mag float the edges and then that's really preparing the surface giving you a nice surface to stamp right there we don't typically just stamp a bull floated surface now we use powdered release a lot I know you can use liquid release too either one works good what we like about the powdered stuff, it, it is messy, yes, it's a lot messier than the liquid, but it does add a secondary accent color to the surface. When you're all said and done and washed and cleaned and then you go to seal it, you'll see the antiquing effect that the powdered release leaves where, where the liquid doesn't. Now setting the first stamp, you know, how where do you start? Which way do you set the, the stamp? Those things are all covered in my training. And some stamp, all stamps are a little different. You know, these have a certain way they go together. So once you set one down, all the other ones have to go the same way in a certain pattern. So depending on what you use for a stamp, you know, you'll need to know that first which way they connect together. Sometimes it's good to practice in some sand and just get them all connected and make sure you know just the way they're gonna to fit together the best. Now we're using what we call some stamping shoes. So we these have really flat soles and they, they give our feet just a little more surface area so we're less likely to, to step down in, on the stamp and leave like a heel print or, or a low spot or a dip you know through the stamp if the concrete's still a little bit soft so we'll use those stamping shoes a lot when we stamp
Now the next day, usually it's the next day, we come back and we'll saw some contraction joints in this and we'll, we'll try to hit it as close to those grooves as, as possible to hide them. But, you know, concrete is usually going to want to crack somewhere. And we saw these contraction joints in it to try to make it crack right in these nice straight joints. So the concrete doesn't have just a random crack somewhere. And we'll just put them in as close together as we feel they need to be, depending on what the patio looks like, what the walkway looks like. You know, if we're going around any any objects in the concrete, it's going to tend to want to crack off them. But we basically saw it close enough so we can control the cracks and not let's let them go wherever they want. And we have a bunch of different saws. This is just one of them. This is an electric one we have. We use on smaller projects. And then we got a gas powered one we use on bigger projects. So when we come back, you know, we'll saw it and then we'll go right into cleaning it. We'll broom off most of the dust first. Then we'll hit it with a pressure washer. We can clean off any dust that gets on the house this way. Make sure everything stays nice and clean, the siding, the trim, the doors. And we'll use a little bit of Dawn dish detergent or some simple green with some water. And that usually breaks down the, the release dust really good. Gets the concrete all ready to seal. We'll just scrub that around basically just like washing a car. And then we'll go over it again with the, with the pressure washer. You can see we're not getting the tip of the pressure washer too close. But we're just rinsing off any of the, the loose stuff. And then we'll let it dry for a few days and come back and seal it. So again, guys, you know, if you haven't subscribed yet, go, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Check out the course if you want to learn more about stamping, if you want to get into stamping, if you want to start your own business, I can help you out with that. It's all in the course. And again, we'll see you on the next one.